Welcome, Divine Masculines. This is a reading just for you. We're going to take a look at your energies here uh, that will be playing out for a few weeks. And if you're interested, you may also check out the Divine Feminine Counterpart energy reading as well as we step in and out of these energies in our partnerships. Our first row that we're going to look at here, oh, before I start, if you are interested in a personal reading, you can book through the, the website listed below in the description box. So we are going to deal here with the first row. This is going to look at your psychology a little bit, the subconscious. We're going to take a look at some higher energies that you can access, how these two realms can be integrated here, and then your crowning card will really look at the unification that can take place between you and the feminine energy during this time. <coughs> Excuse me. So your first card is really highlighting the type of programming that comes through your deep ancestral roots, like what gets through your DNA. And what I'm getting here is this, um, this very strong uh, female energy, actually. You may be used to being around a, a strong female leader in your environment, perhaps your mother, perhaps your partner, perhaps, you know, just someone that's in your surroundings for whatever reason. And, excuse me once again, <coughs> what I'm getting here is that you really admire and respect the leadership qualities of this character because it's leading in a way that's not destructive. It's a very strong presence and it actually has a lot of physical strength. It's not uh, a manipulative way of going about getting uh, one's needs met. It has a very assertive energy that's not overly aggressive and there seems to be a nice balance of emotion and thought that goes into the action being taken, like there's a level of consciousness there that's really at work. Now I'm going to look at what is really been going on since you've been here, so your childhood influence, things in your environment, in your community, your family, your friends. What I'm getting out of this is there's been like a real tension to have a lot of things, a lot of material wealth, a display of wealth, and then realizing that those things um, cannot always maintain their states, so they need a lot of maintenance. And this sort of uh, struggle of having to put energy into things to keep them in these glorious states of being, yet it just sort of dulls the whole situation because instead of letting new things emerge and letting the world just kind of recreate itself, you're just maintaining what already was and never getting it back to its original state <clears throat> of glory. So it just feels like a little bit of lackluster energy here and a little weariness as far as you know, like you're, you're being drained of energy. So you may be finding yourself participating in things like this. Now I want to take a look at what's coming through as far as something that was probably shameful for you and so you kind of buried it, but it's actually an attribute that needs to come back up to the surface and be reintegrated. <clears throat> and what I'm getting off of this is really seeing things in a more complex way, you know, enjoying something for its strength and its beauty, very much this type of energy here, the same type of respect that I'm seeing come, coming through. But also knowing that things can be accompanied by something kind of prickly because 
they have to have a, a way of protection and you honoring that like things can't for this energy to be healthy it can't come in as weak and feeble it needs to be protected and you need to be okay with that you can't see its protection as a threat to you alone you can't take it personally and yet you have to understand that you are You have to understand like kind of like your own instincts, your own desires in relation to this. That you know you're not going to give up on this, that there needs to be this level of acceptance and adoration for this that's very realistic, but doesn't dampen your desire for it. And it it may make you seem a little less um strong yourself, it may show a little bit more of your vulnerability, but the trade-off for you is that maybe you don't have to do all the work as far as keeping everything um, maintained. You don't have to do all of the protection and all of the maintenance of all that. That this is actually an energy that that needs to share in this reality with you in a way where it brings a ton of strength to now I'm going to look at what could be an emotional aspect of your existence right now that's been repressed I kind of see here um, just being able to feel warm emotionally a little bit and having that acknowledged, having that be okay and not identified as something that's unacceptable. To be, just being able to own your emotions a little bit and feel comfortable, feel the warmth of them instead of having to go cold emotionally. Okay, let's see here uh, any higher energies that want to come through. <laughs> it's so funny because it's speaking right at this. If I read it, it says, I offer the best of my talents and goodwill, making my place in the, in the universe a better one. The guardian angel of service. So what I get is that in order to do this, like you have to be at peace with this. Like that, that's very important. Like you have to have a peaceful heart, and you have to have the energy to want to do the service. And let's see what else wants to complement that. Wow, this is an intense card. Um, so this feels very busy, and again, I think it lines up with service and busyness and and just doing so much here and all the different roles that can be played. The chaos. This almost has like a Hieronymus Bosch, if you're familiar with his paintings, uh, vibe to it. Yeah, so I mean, again, I'm getting this sort of chaos, um, wanting to do good, and they're just being disorder, uh, disharmony, um, a lack of peace, and really just this all overness that's going on here. So you may, again, be feeling kind of the futility of trying to be, to be the presence of peace in a world that is so chaotic. So let's look here at what's, what might want to come through here for the 
integrating some of this. And in the vibes you get the Buddha. I mean this is like the strongest energy of, of peace here. And of resting. This isn't a, an all over action oriented card. This is a card that's saying that, you know, when you attune to the frequency that you want to hold, you become, when you become that, your world is going to respond to you in a way that will probably be more in alignment with what you really want. Or at least it's more important for you to have your integrity intact than to worry about all the disharmony in the world because that's going to exist regardless. This is an acknowledgement of like you can control what you can control so go ahead and worry about what you have within you that you can master and don't worry about things that are out of your control as there are natural cycles going on here that don't necessarily need to be fixed and you don't need to sacrifice yourself for them. And this also has, it has a real nice blend of these two cards here for me where it's that like healthy warming emotion, like allowing yourself to feel that and allowing yourself to feel peaceful even if you're not out saving the world. You know, you may have so much pressure on you to do, 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 act, 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 that it's okay to, to rest and just feel good. Now I'm going to look more at the psychological things going on here. I'm going to bring this very close. something very sexy and erotic going on here so you may actually be finding your mind in that kind of space really feeling um, when you rest when you allow yourself to just sort of be that you do have access to a, sense of a pleasure and of allowing for um, like the pleasure of the feminine qualities to come in and and fill you in a way. This is kind of like a, a feminine energy that you can uh, begin to absorb and cultivate in a way that that fills you. It literally makes you feel, you know, alive and. And like you, you can't get that in another way. So I encourage you, I, I, what I'm getting through that is like, if you feel like you're overly busy, you're taking care of all these worldly duties and all this stuff that's really outside of your spiritual health and maybe your own, um, you know, inner kind of sanctuary, your own peaceful existence, your relationships, your intimate relationships especially, that it's okay to make space for those, that those are very, very necessary. And if you don't have that as part of your life, you're going to get completely depleted. And that your counter energy actually has a lot to contribute. Like you don't have to do all the work. There is this really powerful um, cohort energy that you should be in alliance with and working with. And when it comes together well, then these energies are there to balance one another out and not deplete one another, you know. So let's look now at your action. Well, bingo, that just says what I was saying. You're not alone. So... Here I'm getting, yeah, again, like, step out of the role of what you may, if you are identifying with playing, like, more of a traditional masculine role, and allow yourself some of that more traditional feminine time in your life. 
and maybe look to feminine energies to kind of see what they're doing there because the masculine energy may be a little bit distorted and overly structured and devoted to being something that it doesn't necessarily have to be and performing things that it doesn't have to be and you may need to redefine what it is to be in masculine energy and the fluidity of energies themselves you know that like the yin and yang like you can be masculine but there's always a bit of the feminine coming in and vice versa and very much so like having to stay connected in this way because it keeps you energized and it also makes you feel like you're not just stuck in a reality that's that really is so enclosed that it doesn't have any you know future to it any hope to it So in a way, the action is more about non-action. It's more about just being and acknowledging um, yourself a little bit, which in the Divine Feminine reading, you're getting that type of energy in your crowning, or in their crowning card. It's just kind of coming together and letting things be. So let's take a look at your crowner. Yeah, there's a really good balance between the masculine and feminine this week. I, I love it when I see the energies come together and they're literally seeing eye to eye. They are acknowledging one another. There's um, like an equal lineup with all the chakras as they're facing one another. This one always expresses to me that like there's a, there's a little bit of difficulty. Like you may have to... Um, do something that feels a little like you're really kind of having to bend something to come together. You're having to, uh, you know, maybe you have to kind of change up your schedule. You have to do something that just feels like you wouldn't normally do this, but you're willing to go through this measure just to be able to come together. Um, just because you acknowledge that love is very important having emotions around you that are calm, having a feeling that like love can grow, it's, it's in the process of becoming, and that thoughts can be calm, that there can just be a, a pleasant state that's created when these two energies come together with a little bit of sacrifice, that it's worth it. And I also like this because it's not a huge grand gesture, you know, it's not anything that feels over the top. It's just like a little bit of uh, compromise on both people's behalves can um, bring quite a bit of pleasure into one's life. It's almost like a bigger payoff than even with the, than the effort going into it. So that's really nice to see. So, my dear masculine energies, I hope that this was helpful for you, and I have seven playlists I keep um, going on YouTube with different themes going on, so feel free to engage with any of those. I love having you along. Please take excellent care, and join me again if you can.